How'd the mission go? It was okay. Took a couple holes, but had an appointment to keep here, so made sure to show up on time. What were you in this time, uh, Mitchell? It, the most raggedy ass B-25 you've ever seen. Strafe and run? Only three more to go, and then I'm free, so. Cool, dude. Yeah. It's a cool plane. Yeah. You gotta love it. Yeah. Yeah, so. Cool. What it's do you got, like, 850s on that sucker? 850s? I think. Strafing? Was it a strafing run? Or a bombing no. run? Yeah, it was a bombing run. Or a propaganda leaflet run? No, a bombing run, but the, the little door in the back got stuck, so we just kind of headed home. Do you fly like this so you're warmer? <laughs> yeah, like a turtle. Look call at it, that, dude. We call it turtled in the Air Corps. <laughs> I don't know if I like the sound of that. <laughs> I'm turtling. I'm pretty sure this isn't a bomber pattern, though. I know you don't believe that. It looks like a B-24 jacket. Uh, it might have been. They had a different Gray jacket, specs. by the way. They had, like, the, the mechanics one yeah. on the ground. Would you imagine being that guy wearing your mechanics jacket after the war? Like, dude, would you fly? I worked on the gear. He worked on the gear. Huh. Yeah, they did wear that. Yeah. We had our crew chiefs uh, when I was in the Air Force. They wore some leather jackets it's, dude, too. It's, it's warm and yeah. it's fuzzy inside. It's like being back in the room. Practical. Practical. <sighs> We're not here to talk about leather so much. We're here to talk about AKs. See, and you AK fans will like this video because once again, we're gonna be talking about some Palmettos. And boy, do we have some cool guns to show you. Yeah, buddy. Do you wanna show that one first? I don't know, I was just gonna grab one Sure, hand. go ahead. Okay, so before we get going here, before we build up that momentum, dun, 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 dun. Know that we have reviewed the Palmetto AK product, the PSAC 47, multiple times. I did an infield review. I've done, I think, a bunker review. I uh, haven't formally reviewed this one. This is a GF3, a third gen in Nutmeg, a triangle folder. So it's going to be very similar to the one I'm going to show you here. But it has traditional Warsaw packed furniture, laminated Nutmeg here, cheese grater, heat guard here, and a very tiny Warsaw packed pistol grip, but that's I'm actually, not going to change that. That's bigger than most of the Warsaw ones. It comes no, down a little bit further. I don't think so. It's Dude, check out the, the old Arsenal takeoffs it's we have. It's I know. I'm saying those are smaller. This so, is still made for fat American hands in comparison. But this is so cool. And let me show you this one here, by the way. This one is so cool that I just don't want to change it. This yeah. is a cast member gun right here. It has been seen multiple times. It's going to shoot just like the ones we're going to talk about here. This is a third gen GF3. We will go over the differences if you don't know them. Palmetto has some good information on their website about it if you care. What's up with the sights? What do you mean? Don't you have those dialed in like setting three? Mm, they may have gotten bumped. I don't know. Yeah, but great gun here. I have shot this multiple times, but it, it was not like officially reviewed though. It's just going to hang out in the background here. Now, let me say this. I have reviewed multiple AK companies before. I am coming back and reviewing Palmetto. I'm not associated with Palmetto at all. They don't give me free product. They don't pay me to do these reviews. Uh, why do I do it? I love that they've generationally improved this gun. I love the configurations they bring it out in. And I love that it has withstood torture tests, 5,000, 10,000 round torture tests. And I think the prices are reasonable for where we are now. Yeah. That's why. I like the public service they do and arming a lot of people. Palmetto Pretty gets cool. it done. And they have improved their website. I have criticized their website, rightfully so. It is slightly better. I still think there's a lot of noise on it. Noise on it. Hey, did you know, by the way, and I think this is still holding true, that they do not sell these kits anymore to build these guns. You know why? Because everybody dicked it up and they had to send it to Palmetto to fix it. Totally That's what that. they said. They're like, yeah, we're not selling AK kits anymore. You guys don't know what you're doing. Let's be fair though. It is a relatively difficult process compared to putting together an AR. You're riveting things and I'm not gonna say that's easy. So anyways, that's why. You're gonna buy a ready-made rifle. I like that anyhow. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys in the ready room with your B-25 Mitchell like ready-made AKs. Generally. Generally. Uh, let's show you the two versions we're going to talk about. Uh, let's start off with that triangle folder. And I have a suspicion you guys are going to lose your minds over this one just because the configuration is so cool. Let me first thank Gunnies, the Great American Gun Store, for the loaners. These are both their guns. I checked it out on FFL Forum. If I really, 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 really like it, 
I may purchase it, but I have to have a really good case for why we would add that. I'll let you know though, generally speaking, as a non-reviewer, would I purchase these guns? You might know the answer. Go ahead and hold that one up. Here comes a GF3 triangle folder that TD's holding up. That is a great looking gun. It has a very interesting rail on it, dudes. A very interesting rail. I will talk about that. This is a third gen. Okay, and then we'll talk about the generational improvements. Well, maybe now. What do you think? You sure. Do it now. Yeah. Okay, hold that sucker up. I may roll in some shooting video while we're doing this. Like I said, Palmetto has done a great job of generationally improving these guns. The third gen, Hammer Forge Trunnion, Bolt, and Carrier. I have seen some third gens, at least judging from the specs on their websites, also upgrading the Trunnion to 4340 steel, which is generally a fifth gen improvement read the specs on the type that you have and by the way i'll warn you it can be a little bit confusing because the configurations of these guns are so varied but you can get an improvement in trunnion if you don't know what we're talking about we're talking about this portion right here which has all the wear and tear on it nitrided 4150 barrel put together by they say dc machine which stands for diet coke that's messed up yeah so it's put together by a company called Diet Coke Machine. Yep. It's a 14 by, most configurations are 14 by one, left-hand threaded barrel, one to 9.5 twist rate. The third gen was released in 2018. Again, it has been torture tested. Some variations like this one will have the very amazing, highly recommended ALG AKT enhanced trigger with the lightning bow, whatever the hell that is. It's something that makes it pull smoother. Yeah. Don't really care, actually. Now, the fourth gen came out, and that had all the same features, but you got that 4340 steel trunnion. And I guess with AK snobs, for lack of a better term, that's really important, even though those guys won't pump 400 rounds through their guns in one year. Actually, in a lifetime, some of them. I'm just telling you about the guys I know. I know about like, five guys that have AKs, and I ask them if they ever shoot them. The answer is no. Like, no, Never. But apparently we need the product that can withstand, uh, you know, 10,000 rounds torture testing. So. I've ranted about this. I'm just kind of being consistent. Also, I think the GF3, not the GF3, the GF4 fourth gen introduced a cold hammer forge barrel by DC Machine. Hmm. Now, let's hold up the fifth gen. So we're going to come back. I'm going to talk about that rail. The rail is pretty sick. I, I love that rail in a way, in a way. Here we go. So here's a fifth gen. This is in Magpul Zukov furniture. And it's here's like every other Magpul. Here's the okay. thing though. The reason I love this configuration so much, yes, there's some fifth gen improvements. Like we have an FN produced barrel in apparently, as they say, machine gun steel. Whoa! We're gonna talk practically what that means when I show you paper. So kind of cool your jets over there on the other side of this camera. I love FN and I love their barrels, but this barrel is about the same as all the others. It measures by my micrometer, like 0.57 inches, just like that other one I held up. Other improvements on the fifth gen is now we're guaranteed a, a forged trunnion in 4340 steel. And then you have a selector lever that will give you three round burst and full auto fire. Yeah. That's actually a very cool touch. You guys didn't know that the fifth gen does that? Oh, and you hit it. They added the little paddle there. Kidding. Which Forced cool. hammer, too, is I think the fifth gen adds that. The what? Uh, they added the little paddle. So if you want to use a, yeah. a finger. Strangely, throughout this whole process, though, they do not have a notched safety selector that will hold the bolt open. Or an ambidextrous safety. They probably should have done that somewhere along the way. Uh, same twist rate. Same ALG trigger. Let me talk about this and how much I love the ALG trigger. This is the trigger I put in my AK variants. I'm going to show you some SGLs, Russian produced AKs that I put together, or not put together, but modded. This is the same trigger I put in them. It is the best trigger out there. I still like the Tapco G2, however, I do not love it. And Tapco is bye bye. Well, not exactly bye bye. Did you know Chick fil A bought them? Really? Mm hmm. Oh. 
Chick-fil-A is going to come out with a Tapco furniture. Five stuff. AK parts gets you one coupon for a free chicken sandwich. Well, I hear if you buy, you remember their old Timberwood stocks and laminate yeah. that these have? If you buy a, and you got to go to Chick-fil-A to pick them up. But if you buy an AK stock set from Chick-fil-A in one of their Timberwood laminates, they brought that name back, you yeah. will get a uh, certificate for like a 20-piece nugget. That is such a pain, though. With three oh. dipping sauces. Every time you have a build, you got to finish. You have to wait in the 20 deep Chick-fil-A hey, drive through just to pick the up The good news stuff. is that Tapco's alive, albeit yeah. Chick-fil-A is the one that brought cool. them back. Yeah. There are rumors that they're going to sell it to Wendy's. Uh, package pickup is right at uh, the counter. With we're just having stuff. fun, guys. Relax. The guys are like, what the hell are they talking about? <laughs> Not TM Peers. TM Peers know as well. They're like, keep going, guys. We love it. Yeah. Keep going. So anyways, uh, back to the Chick-fil-A AK variant. The a a ALG trigger is amazing. I found in the day putting these in, I would say for me, difficult. And I'm mechanically inclined. But to get them right and get them tuned up right, I had to put some work in it. And I've, I've installed three of them. So here with this variation, also that other GF3, that triangle stock, you have an ALG trigger already mounted. And ladies and gentlemen, can I just get a round of applause right now? Round of applause. Perfect. It is the best trigger. I pulled this one in this fifth gen PSAC 47 dudes at three pounds, six ounces. <gasps> Pretty good. Oh, can I tell you how excited I am for that? So excited. So excited. That is fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. So this is a stamped receiver, one millimeter in thickness, just like the other variations, just like the one behind me. I've talked a lot about this. I did an AK... Maybe you did it with me, the uh, accessorizing AKs, how I did it. There's a video out there. And guess which stock set I put on? This one right here. So this has adjustable length of pull. It's a folding stock. Cheap it, pieces are available too. God, no I just love it. No one seems to notice that, but they're out there. It's going to add weight, guys. But you don't choose an AK variant for lightweight. Can we be real? Yeah. You don't. I mean, that triangle folder, like with nothing on no as it's configured is seven pounds 13 Jeez. ounces that's with a sig romeo 5 red dot um, in it huge rail and, and metallic irons i'm going to talk about that w without a mag seven pounds so you're not you're not choosing this this one i forgot to write a weight down it's going to be pushing eight yeah right at right about <laughs> welcome to ak's I, I mean the zukov furniture is so amazing it's adjustable folding it's got a long gripping area right here you have m lock slots right here goodness gracious it's okay. great the the pistol grip on this highly preferred i way prefer this over that one this is just second cool right here bro it's just not first cool this is second cool is all hmm. yeah we're gonna look at the details on that one that's a really cool chick-fil-a mag in that by the way is that a tapco yeah yeah chick-fil-a so that's a chick-fil-a well it's rebranded chick-fil-a yeah the messed up part is when it comes out, it's going to have a chicken on the side of it. Or the cows. You know how the cows yeah. are holding up the sign, yeah. eat more chicken. You have to pay two bucks per mag. Extra That's going to be like emblazoned on the side. Yeah. That's going to kind of ruin it. We got to have a letter writing campaign to tell them not to do you that. You want affordable domestic AKs is what you get. <laughs> they have advertising and branding on them. So you just got to deal with it. Nice paddle release. We have some dimples right here. A lot of the standard AK features we've talked about. This variation, as do a lot, have the included optic trail. I love having an optic trail. Yeah. It will add four ounces usually to the weight of your AK, your stamp receiver AK. How do I know that? Because I've installed them, and they weighed four ounces before I installed them. It's the worst having to install them. Too. Yeah, we've it's talked about that. We've ranted deal. about it. 800-meter sight on this variation. Standard space in AK, that is short sight radius it is what it is i usually like putting a thinner sight post in here i shot this one with irons i don't think i ever scoped this one i don't think we have a six port brake on this variation oh by the way a 90 degree gas block on this variation do you prefer 90 degree or 45 traditional literally could not care any less i kind of like this one this one is kind of a more modernized version I kind of like it. This is called an AKE. I think that's AK enhanced mm. tank brake, and it was effective. Hmm. Louder than shit, hmm. by the way, if you're on the side. Hmm. And I was shooting near some chickens, and they did not like yes. it. I still like the, the AKM brake, or the, the 74. Oh, the, the love three it. Three port. Love it. Open. Yeah. I, every time I bring a 74 brake on, I tell them it's one of the best brakes ever designed. Good job, Ruskies. Yeah. You kind of knew what you were doing. It's heavy though. Those things are like seven and a half ounces. They're made of steel. 
So I, I forgot to check. I don't think this is chrome lined, the gas tube. They should. Every gas tube should be chrome lined because if you shoot corrosive with any AK product, get ready for problems. If you don't immediately clean your gas tube, and that's in dry Utah, dry Wyoming, or uh, down there in Bakersfield, California, where we shoot. I'm kidding. We never shoot there, ever. Never would. Features uh, on this gun. Standard safety selector. I ran it about no notch. The magazine release, uh, good. Standard AK. Yeah. Real nice. There's a wiggle in this very slight and we talked about the quality components inside which makes a lot of people happy a lot of people happy i mean the quality is there again hammer forged trunnion bolt and carrier let's hold up that triangle folder very very excellent very excellent the triangle folder by the way show them that rail right there and i'm going to talk about it this you guys are going to get wood for this variation i think so this is called and a lot of you guys probably already know this, but I'm new to this product. This is called a JB Billet Force Alignment AK Rail. It's 10 and a quarter inches long. It weighs about 10 ounces. It's interlocking and very stable. And this is from my own testing. It did not wiggle around at all. It's stable enough. As you can see, I can mount a vertical grip on it, which I did in the M-Lock slot. Excellent heat dissipation. You have uh, rail M-Lock slots at 3, 6, 9 o'clock. It's made of 60, 61 aluminum. If you buy it, I think it's about 240 bucks. As you can see, it's stable enough to mount a red dot on, which would be ideal. And by the way, I think I have a separate video on that Sig Romeo 5. I just haven't posted it yet. It is recommended. I have a link below. It's a mm. great red dot. No, we just don't talk about hollow suns. Uh, we talk about others. And by the way, I lost the cap on the top. That's pretty standard out in field. Look at it. How do you think about how that looks, by the way? I like this. This is preferred to the uh, Zukov stuff, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't really think the Zukov's age. It's okay to say uh, that. You don't have to mumble it. I know. But you don't it, mumble in your ready room. I'm surprised that Magpul hasn't updated it. It's been around for, what, eight years now? Really? Yeah, I think so. It's, I it's getting long in the tooth. I don't think it needs updating. I'm just going to be honest. I think it does. it's freaking awesome. It does. It needs another like four inches of length, just like this. That is going to add weight, though. Yeah, but you need Hold somewhere on. to mount your VGs. You can't yeah. mount VGs on the, the normal Zukov yeah. so easily because it's going to get right in the way of your mags. I love what you're saying. And That's this space out there is pretty nice. Also, the fact that Zukov doesn't give you QD cups in the very mm -hmm. rear kind of bugs me. It's a it's not a cheap There's stock. There's a QD cup right there, dude. No, it is There's empty. There's a QD cup there. And it, oh, you have to like You have it. to buy yeah. it. You okay. have to spring for 16 bucks a gotcha. side if you want them there, Haas. What the hell is falling over here, dude? It's an AR. Nice. We got too many guns hanging out. Dude, this is falling over, just so you know. This is yeah, like hanging out. Which would I prefer between the two guns I'm showing you? No, Do you on. have to ask? <laughs> Seriously, have you watched our content or are you like new? AR, baby. All day long. But, but we still love AKs. And is that a genuine love or are we just doing it for camera? Yeah, I love them. Do we use AKs in our system, Tactical Doodle? My son, fruit of my loins, do we actually use them? Embrace that term, by the way. There's nothing it's wrong your, with that. It's your main truck gun. Told you. It's my 30 cal defensive rifle. That's all I have. Oh. I don't have 300 blackout. I have 762 by 39. Thank you. And that's why I love the AK because yeah. I love 76239. It's affordable. It has come back, by the way. Yeah. I, I'm seeing quantities of it again, which is very heartening for me. Okay, let's get going. We're getting sidetracked as usual. I think you guys love that, by the way. Triangle metal stock. It will freeze the living <whistles> out of your cheek in the wintertime. You might want to wrap it with something. I recommend high quality electrical tape. It is not adjustable. The length of pull is what it is. Deal with it. If you live somewhere humid, don't use electrical tape. Yeah, like it, it's rust underneath? No, it turns into slime in like oh, two yeah, years. Yeah. It yeah. makes an, a, a huge mess. Good point. Yeah. There might be some... Sport like poly, tape? Well, there oh, might be an aftermarket tape. company that makes a polyurethane, yeah. something, something. I don't think guys buying this gun are going to do it. They're you just, want the crank-off look, you get the crank-off lifestyle. Yeah, they're just dealing with it. This yeah. locks up very solidly. It is very nice. It folds... Uh, I wouldn't say it folds easily. I find that I have to push that button like really, really, really hard to fold Something it. Something I would watch over time is how... This looks like that's where the latch ends up hooking onto. It's made of steel though, not aluminum. Yeah. It I might... don't look at that and go, hey, that's crap. I'm going to have problems with it. And by the way, I've been running this one, this exact same mechanism, this one in the background. Yeah. You don't fold it very much though. 
I don't. I would. I mean, I'm so busy testing everything. It's not like yeah. I can go out and run a thousand rounds. For well, this, this has now. like one little mar and open steel, <laughs> so who knows? Cool. If you're folding it a lot, basically, just Enough watch sad. out for it. Pressing on. I love this grip right here. That's the U.S. Palm. It's outstanding. Do you like that better than the Magpul? Or about the same? Yeah, I like it more. This mm, would be my I, favorite aftermarket, but I still uh, prefer the original. I actually would go with the Magpul over that one. Uh, I've always liked the U.S. Palm. It's just a little bit skinny through here. I like it. Don't get me wrong. And I love that they did a rest collar. That's really fun. Same ALG trigger. It's the same press. The amazingness is there. The durability, the corrosion resistance is all there. And then look at this. This is a billet swiveling top cover, which is outstanding. Now, what I did not test for this, and I apologize, is I didn't test the, the stability and repeatability of mounting an optic on this. We have tested in years past covers just like this. Uh, Krebs comes to mind. Yeah. We tested the Krebs product, and I found the variability was not, uh, uh, let me say the variability was there. That we would like keep the optic on, then I'd swill it down, and it was like, I don't know, 3 ohm away or something. I it was, was substantial. That, that one had wandering. another lock on it, too. Yeah, because it, it had like a cross bolt or something that you had to undo while you mm -hmm. did this back. So right. it might even be worse than that one. What what I'd recommend is probably just going uh, with what we've done is a Ford mounted red dot. I think most y'all would do that anyhow. This is a stable mounting service uh, service can't speak surface. The JB billet handguard. That's probably the way to go. If you have information on this, just say in comment, yeah, I've mounted an optic back there. It's working pretty good. It's not working very good. But here you have a wide field of view, red dot. I don't consider this a long range gun anyhow. Yeah, not so much. <clears throat> so the one cool thing about this particular variation of PSAC 47 GF3, third gen, is that you have a longer sight radius with non-traditional AK sights. You have just a standard non-adjustable peep. All your adjustment is going to be at the front end of the gun, but look at your sight radius. Yeah way longer and if you put a thinner post in here you adjust it you can get away with just running there irons dude yeah you have a prong flash hider on here it's cool looking at least yeah uh i'm trying to remember if there's a tuning fork dynamic i think there was anytime hmm. you get a prong flash hider it might go doing doing a little bit that's kind of cool yep uh the other stuff is the same uh by the way this billet top cover adds weight the fore end adds weight, and that's why this thing is seven pounds thirteen without a magazine. Add another, I would say at least six ounces with a magazine. If you're going to run steel like this one, this is like eight ounces, I think, if I'm remembering right. These are not super light, but they're awesome. Look at the cool rust on that, dude. Did you know I find I found this in Russia with a metal detector? Really? Kind of cool. Uh, which variation do you like most so far? Tactical doodle. This one, hold on, I'm gonna throw the nutmeg in too. So this one, the nutmeg, nutmeg traditional, hanging on the back of the bunker. This one, the crank off kind of. This one with that super cool rail or the fifth gen with the Zukov black furniture. You have to choose one, which one would you choose? It would be a tie between this one and the the nutmeg. You're just not a fan of the Magpul furniture, are you? I already have it. Oh. oh. Hold that up again, because I forgot I didn't finish my point I was going to make. Okay, so one reason I love this one so very much is that this configuration, dudes, is exactly what I was making when it wasn't available. Here comes my modified Russian SGL 21. Look at this, dudes. Right here. Huh. Look at that. Now, granted, I coded it. It's got an AK-103 optics mount on there which is insanely expensive by the way but awesome look at this is the same thing we're looking at i mean i chose this i chose that i did the zuka forend in like 2013 yes this is why i'm saying it's long in the tooth speaking of ak-74 muzzle brake there which we don't take off if the gun comes with it leave it on it, it really dampens a gun. It's worth the wait. It's firepower versus mobility. I will keep that on. But what I'm showing you is that this is the GF5. And I, I put this together many, many years ago. There's my ALG trigger I installed. And, dude, there it is. Now, granted, I went with it over the dust cover scope on this because this is my long range AK. And let me show you the paper on this, by the way. Um, 
that's a piece sock right there. Here you go. I got so much paper, we can be here all night doing it. Oh, that's a 31, dude. That's a. That's not the right gun. Here's an STL 31, just in case you want to see that. Whatever. That's a different caliber. Here's a 21 right here. This is when I was doing ammo testing. And some were great, some not so great. Uh, this is kind of what you can expect with a stamped receiver AK. Am I right or wrong, TV? Yeah. Uh, my go to war load still is in Hornady SST. I love that one. That printed pretty good. That's how that coded SGL uh, 21 that you're seeing. I don't even know why I'm showing you all this, just for interest, I guess. Uh, I'm kind of setting the stage of the accuracy we're going to show you right now of these two guns. Uh, first up will be the triangle holder. Actually, since you're holding that, let me see if I have one of that. No, I don't. So, triangle holder right here. And some of this was with the red dot. So I think that's red dot right, right there. And that's in windy conditions. You'll see me shooting somewhere in inset. Here, I'm going to go back to that FN barrel. So this one does not have the FN barrel on it. It's a third gen. Does it really, really, really make a difference from my experience? The answer is no. I think that the attraction to having an FN cold hammer force barrel is durability, not necessarily accuracy, according to that fancy. So if you're playing, I'm cranking tons and tons of rounds through it, which you're not going to do because you don't have the money, by all means, get a fifth, a fifth gen. If you're not, just buy a third gen, you'll be fine. The accuracy, I really didn't see that much of a difference with it, although I didn't spend all day with it since this is kind of an add-on review. Here's triangle folder, uh, 50 yards irons. It shot freaking two feet high. Hmm. Son of a bitch. Uh, it needs some adjustment. I just didn't fool around with it, and I knew I was going to put a red dot on it. Here is the triangle folder again, 25 yards, Sig Romeo 5, windy. That was pretty good. Did you adjust the front sights on this? No. Dude, <laughs> no. you got to take a picture because look how freaking no. tall they are. No, I didn't mess with them at that all. thing's got like... Look at that accuracy, though. That's good. That's only 25 yards. Now... This is going back with the original plum colored piece sack 47 GF3. Sorry if that's a bunch of jargon. It is what it is. Some guys really get off on it. Uh, 50 yards with that gun. This is the accuracy you're going to expect with both of these guns. It's not too bad. That's a great load, uh, great group right there. That's just with a TRS 25 red dot. Hmm. Uh, the bottom line is these are accurate. I thought I had one for that. Uh, I don't know where it went. I had one for that FN barrel that I wanted to show them, but it went bye-bye. Yeah. Hmm. Whatever it was, it was a little bit better, but it was not amazing. Not amazing. Okay. So I would, I wouldn't, my point in telling you all this is I wouldn't go out and say, oh, I got to get a fifth gen. Unless again, and this is just me, you're playing on cranking rounds through the gun, then by all means get what you want. Uh, for me, and my second cool preference, I really like the looks of this one. I think it is super sick. Would I buy it? Absolutely. Wouldn't hesitate. Now, Gunnies, last time I checked, did have these in stock. If you can, uh, drop by Gunnies, the Great American Western Wear store. Maybe pick one of these up. I think his prices are amazing. If you can't, maybe I throw some links below that will take you direct to Palmetto and you ship them to your FFL. I've never ordered direct from Palmetto either. I have. I got this gun direct from them, and it worked amazing. I had it shipped direct to Gunny's. I just added to cart for this dagger. Doom. Yeah. Awesome. It works great. Yeah, and sometimes it has some sales where you can, like, kill it. I, I love this one, though, because I love the furniture. Again, this is the same configuration I do. Uh, this is not as cool looking, but I do love that brake they have on it. I like the sight configuration. It has a 90-degree gas block. I like that. I, I just love everything about it. The only way this would be made cooler is if they did it in a non-boring black version. Yeah. But we have that plum-colored one, too. And it's over in Utah, so it's not in the bunker right now. There you go. Uh, preferences, then? What did you end up saying? I would probably do the one with the M-lock rail. Now it's stuck in the pile. Except I would get a probably a fixed Warsaw Pact length stock in wood fixed huh and uh, so you're talking the, traditional yeah okay yeah i kind of there's something i know you like the magpul zukov grip but i kind of hate it because if i hold an ak I, I want it to feel like an ak yeah, i, I, I like the flavor and i, I like it. the the bizarre tiny little i put the the little sgl stock grips back on yeah i'm gonna call out 
call you out a little bit on that because when I modded this, you freaking fell in love with it, and it's exactly the same modification. Yeah, I've fallen you out loved of love it. with it. Oh, okay. So yeah. you just changed. So yeah. you're going more towards the second cool yeah. traditional side of the AK well, formula. That's okay, by the way. Almost 10 years later, we've had nothing but ARs. I've had nothing but Magpul grips. I mean, it's just Look a little long. Look how badass that thing looks. That is nasty. If they update Zukov, give it a couple more inches in the front. I, to me, that's enough. I have enough room for I actually put a pick rail there so I can put a VG on that son of a gun. Love it. It's tight, man. <laughs> it's tight. God, these are fun to shoot. By the way, I want to thank uh, Whitney Peterson for sending me ammunition, and he sent me like a thousand rounds Jeez. of seven six two thirty nine. He is a donor. Round of applause Sheesh. for him. Thank you very much. And he sent me some other rounds too. Uh, I hope you don't mind if I say your name. I've tried to see his message somewhere. Or if he wanted to like be known or not, I don't know. But it, it was that was his name, <laughs> Whitney. Thank you very much. Uh, trust me, it's going to go to good use. It's going to go to good use. Um, these. Palmetto PSOC 47s are outstanding. Uh, again, I'm not seeing a huge difference between a third gen and a fifth gen. I, I wouldn't like care which one. I mean, that's a third gen right there, albeit with an ALG trigger. Some will have 4340 trunnions. <clears throat> there you go. This review brought to you by donors of the Nut and Fancy Project. Thank you very much. Consider being one. I only ask you join and stay in there for the rest of your life. That really isn't too much to ask. You can do a dollar a video. You can do, most guys do two to five bucks a video. I charge six per month. Uh, the more donors I have, the more I am motivated to do more content. And this is the kind of stuff you guys dig. I mean, I try to do watch reviews, knife reviews, I don't try, I do them. Uh, knife reviews, motorcycle stuff, adventure stuff, and everybody wants gun stuff. True or false, TD. Yep. Uh, by the way, we were talking about merch. We'll say this now. Uh, we would love to do more merch. The honest truth is we just don't have enough participation in the general TMP audience. For me to do merch and for us to go out and spend what will be probably about $20,000 on merch, that's just our pricing and having uh, a thousand shirts, a thousand hats. We you need wish. like You wish. I'm not, I'm not kidding when it's like the unit demand has gone way up. So it's even higher than that. Yeah. Okay, don't get in the weeds with it, but I want to make the point. As of, in minimum order, fifteen to 20000 Okay. that's We, we can't do that. What we would need on the video uh, views would be like probably 500,000 views every single video I put out. We're not anywhere near that. I'm just answering calls for merch. What we have is a very enthusiastic small cadre of guys, and we thank you for that. But it would be a losing proposition at this point. Now, if I start getting like 500,000 views on every single video, that's a lot of eyeballs and that's a lot of potential buyers for the merch, then it would be worthwhile. There's your answer. So we may do a small batch of stickers, a small batch of maybe some patches, but we're not gonna do a huge push like before. Yeah. This is post uh, scamdemic and everything has changed. Like he's saying that order quantities is super duper oh, duper dude. high. When I got the hats done, the, the <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. guy that did it said they were pissed. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, thanks for dropping by. Hopefully you had a good time with this PSAC 47 GF3, GF5 update. Tag on GRV. Man, that's a lot. Something like that. It's a they word a salad. Yeah, hopefully you had fun. We did. This was a fun one to do. Fun one to shoot, too. I love shooting these yeah. guns. Uh, thanks to TD for dropping by. We love having him. I got to let him get back to uh, strafing uh, locomotives in his yep. B-25. Got railroads to plunder. Yeah. And remember, if you want to be cool, pop your collar up like that, bro. What's funny is When you this, do a walk around with your Mitchell, walk around like that. You could say this is a bomber jacket to a, like a Zoomer, and they'll say it's a Bane jacket from the Batman movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, Because that's yeah. what they think. Yeah, of. yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. there's a That's a sad that they don't know split. where it came from. Very sad. <laughs> We're trying to change that. Anyways, we got to check out uh, another... Where are we at on this? No, it's not too bad. Hmm. Semi-feature length review. Tag on to Palmetto. See you next video.